What's up guys? Welcome to episode 2 of the XS650 Chopper build. And I thought that I'd make things a little bit legitimate and go ahead and get us a whiteboard for this thing. That way we can keep track of all the costs, just like a real show. So, first things first... It was seventeen dollars. <laughs> yeah, it was seventeen fucking dollars. Are you still recording? Yeah. All right, but for real though, I do want to keep track of everything that we spent on this bike because I feel like one of the important things about this build series, especially for somebody who doesn't know what they're doing like we are, is keeping track of all the costs and all the expenses it takes to build something like this. A lot of people are completely in the dark. They don't know how much it costs to build a bike like this. You know what? To be completely honest, I don't know how much it costs to build a bike like this. It's going to cost me a little bit more than it will cost somebody else because I don't know what I'm doing. And there's always a little bit of a stupid tax when you don't know what you're doing because a lot of times you have to do things twice. So this is going to be more expensive for me than somebody else. So hopefully at the end of this, uh, people will learn from my mistakes that we make while we're making this chopper. Uh, let's really get started on the real expenses as my whiteboard's falling apart and say the first expense of a chopper build, of course, is the bike itself? Did I spell it right? I think I spelled it right. Yeah, you're good. So we haven't made a we haven't made a whole lot of purchases just yet. The first one and the biggest one being the bike itself. The second one being the hardtail that we're putting on the bike. So we haven't spent a lot on the bike yet. We managed to get it for a pretty cheap price, but I'm going to keep a running total of what we've spent on the bike so far. So while a lot of what we're doing on the bike does cost money, and there's a lot of incidentals like paint and tools and beer, a lot of it comes for free. So some of the things you'll spend the most time on this bike don't cost anything at all except a whole lot of elbow grease. And that's what today's episode is going to be about. And these are the kind of things that if somebody else did this entire project would cost an exorbitant amount of money because time for me is free time for somebody else that costs money and when I say me I don't really mean my time because I'm just supervising this whole project this is Jessica's motorcycle so I'm not actually doing this work she is so let's take a look at this engine so looking at this engine just just looking at it from here on camera it looks like wow that's a cool blacked out engine you might be like that's murdered out dog yeah i like that shit i like that blacked out fucking style but let me tell you this was really disappointing because when i first saw it i was like oh you know it's powder coated black i actually prefer the natural aluminum engines but hey it's blacked out like maybe i even started on this side i was like oh we'll just you know take these fins down to create a little contrast kind of like the same way that is on jessica's uh triumph speedmaster until i realized when this shit started coming off with my uh with my fingernail and i realized that guess what this isn't powder coated <laughs> The asshole who built this horrendous cafe racer that you guys saw in the previous video, how bad this thing was. It looks a thousand times better right now, though, torn apart. This asshole spray painted with, like, with like grill paint the entire fucking engine. This shit right here, this, that's got to go. I got my buddy Nomad Josh 13 coming out to help today. I think I hear his ass pulling around the block right now. There's that sexy motherfucker. What up? Broken whiteboard. Seventeen dollars. <laughs> That's fucking X-rated right there. It's talking about flashlight. Then you gotta twist it a little bit. All right, before we get started on bikes, it's time for some beers. And some barbecue. Woo! That one's mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad Josh came over to cook because I'm already a little too drunk. Which means I'm probably a little too drunk to work on motorcycles too, but we got Jessica for that. I call bullshit if you're yeah. too drunk to work on motorcycles. <laughs>
So would you get a little bit of the fucking shit on you? This How's it feel? Bad. How bad? Like fire on my skin. <laughs> <laughs> What's in that cup? Water. Save for the kids. Flavored water. You're so excited. I know. All right, so it's the next day. We didn't quite finish getting this engine done because we ended up getting really fucking drunk on live stream. <laughs> so let's finish this up today. All right, round two with this motherfucker. We uh, we were painting it on with the aircraft stripper with the gel, and that worked sort of well for the big areas but let me see if I get this to focus when it comes into these little little cracks and crevices and here in between the fins it just really wasn't cutting it so I went ahead and I picked up some aircraft stripper that is in a is in an aerosol can so I got my gloves I'm gonna put on a mask and we're gonna see how this shit works That bike's looking pretty sorry as shit right now. We're uh, taking it, or I'm taking it, Jessica's gotta pick up her mom from a appointment at the hospital. Down to, taking it down to FNA Customs to get this motherfucker chopped in half. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff I will do on this bike. There's a lot of stuff I can't do either. And one of the most important parts about this project is being super honest with what I can't do. And I ain't a welder. You know, I've actually gotten a little bit of flack in the comment sections from dudes saying, hey, you should you should learn how to weld and weld this bike yourself. It's not really, you know, it's not really built, not bought, unless you do the welding yourself. And hey, I'm all for learning how to weld. I definitely would like to learn how to weld, trust me. And I believe that there are gonna be certain things on this bike that I will be welding. But when it comes to the frame, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, I just don't trust myself for my first job welding to be welding the motorcycle together that my girlfriend's gonna be driving down the road. Ah, color me cautious, I'm just not into it. So I'm taking it to a guy that came highly recommended from a lot of my friends, uh, this guy Eric at FNA Customs. Like I said, a lot of my buddies have, have brought bikes to him, a lot of my buddies have done work in his shop, and everybody says this guy is the fucking man. And here's the thing. It, am I a sissy or am I a, a poser because I'm not doing every fucking little bit of work on this bike? Well, fuck you, man. Like, I have anything to prove anyway when it comes to something like that. We're doing a lot of the work on our bike because it's way cheaper to do it yourself than it is to have somebody build you a completely custom bike. That's why we're doing it ourselves and for the experience, of course. Lee Stewart shared a really awesome article on the whole built not bought argument. And it's, it, here it is. I'm taking this bike to a local shop to support a guy in my local community. And I don't think that's a bad thing. This guy makes makes his living building custom bikes. So is every bike that he builds only for posers and losers? Is every little bit of custom work he does, is that just make everybody who goes to his shop a fucking loser? No, he's a guy in the community who has a higher degree of skill than I do. Therefore, I'm taking this motorcycle so so it's done right and I don't think that that's a bad thing at all and when I started this like I said I wanted to be really fucking honest with what I couldn't do and this is one of the things I can't do so how far does it go when is it okay to buy it instead of build it you tell me am I gonna like pump oil from the ground with my bare hands and only use artisanal gas that I've crafted myself am I gonna like mix the chemicals to make my own paint like where does it fucking stop you tell me is there a line in the sand personally when it comes to safety stuff like welding this bike together I'm not gonna trust my hands to that I'd rather have a professional do it so that's what I'm gonna fucking do and if you think that makes me a poser well dude obviously you've got higher standards than me and 
you can go fuck yourself. I'll tell you one other thing I wanted to mention. There sure was a lot of butthurt ass motherfuckers when I was talking shit about cafe racers in the first video in this series. And I'll say this. If your skin is so fucking thin, if you're so easily offended that you can't possibly exist in a world where somebody doesn't like exactly the same things that you do, EGAD! Somebody out there doesn't like the same kind of motorcycle that I do, oh my god! Stop the fucking presses! Dude, chill out. Not everybody likes the same shit. That doesn't mean I hate you as a person because you like cafe racers. Shit, I even like some well-done cafe racers. They're just not my fucking thing, man, okay? And I'm not gonna apologize for that, sorry. Just like you shouldn't apologize if you like them. And if somebody doesn't like the same bike as you and that's enough to hurt your fucking feelings, it's time to grow a little bit thicker skin, dog. okay? It's a rough world out there. Right, this is Eric at FNA Customs and we have dropped off the XS650 with the hardtail for him to make this to, for him to do a cafe racer delete on this bike this is a pretty good representation of the kind of stuff Eric does here so you know when you got show winning bikes like this you're dealing with a professional and when it comes to my girlfriend riding her bike down the road I want welds to hold I want a professional to do it so see you in a couple weeks